Gillette, the best an incel can get. Gillette released a commercial based on the premise that men need to be reminded not to be creepy, rapey perverts. Bullying. The Me Too movement against sexual Toxic harassment. masculinity. I watched the commercial, so you don't have to, and it was just one long excruciating exercise in droopy, corporate, Me Too, intersectional feminist drivel. It even featured far-left personality Anna Kasparian from the Young Turks. Yeah, I'm fucking better than you. They also made it clear that white men are particularly rapey. In fact, nearly all the bad guys are white, and nearly all the real men are, well, not white. In fact, throughout the whole commercial, 43 males exhibit undesirable behaviour, 42 of them are white, with just one black. Seven males exhibit desirable behaviour, five of whom are black and only two white. See, here's the thing. Rapists aren't going to be discouraged from raping people because you told them rape was bad. Like, imagine in the future some guy's ripping some poor woman's clothes off. But then he suddenly stops and becomes all remorseful because that Gillette ad from a few years ago flashed across his mind. So all this does is insult the intelligence of men who are never going to be sexual abusers or rapists. What's next? A makeup commercial is going to start lecturing women not to make false rape accusations. Forget maybe it's Maybelline. How about out. Maybe it's make-believe. Or tampon ads going to start emphasising the importance of giving men joint custody of children. Yeah. Don't hold your breath. The Gillette ad also decries boys being boys. Discouraging rough and tumble play in an effort to reduce bullying and harassment, which is only going to have the effect of turning boys into pussies, increasing the chances they'll be bullied and harassed. You see, what you idiots call toxic masculinity we men call surviving in the real fucking world. If you teach your boy to be a soft, crybaby, blubbering idiot, constantly obsessed with his feelings, he's gonna grow up to be a victim. He's gonna get the shit kicked out of him. While you're telling your kid to externalize his emotions, another dad is taking his kid to boxing and martial arts classes. In the long term, a society that emasculates its men will eventually be replaced by a society that doesn't. But in the short term, a society that implores men to behave more like women ensures that those men will vote more like women. You see the agenda here? Everything comes back to power. Women are more likely to vote left-wing, whereas studies show that masculine personality traits are directly associated with voting for right-wing and populist political parties. So by eradicating masculinity, you eradicate an entire voting bloc. It's the most crude form of Machiavellianism, disguised as progressivism. Now the American Psychological Association has denounced stoicism as a characteristic of toxic masculinity, ensuring that depression amongst men will increase competitiveness, achievement, and risk-taking. Three core principles of strident, successful masculinity are also denigrated. We're truly living in the upside-down world. The more men are told not to act like men, to constantly talk about their feelings, to wallow in their feelings, the more suicide rates increase. And there's no stigma around depression. We're constantly bombarded with people talking about their depression. On social media, on TV, in entertainment, it's everywhere. And the more we obsess about it and normalise it, the worse it gets. Telling men that their natural biological impulse to behave like men, which is to be stoic and strong-minded, is innately wrong will only increase depression. It will also decrease their chances of finding a woman because women aren't attracted to pussies. This is number one. Okay. okay. <laughs> this is number two. Which one do you prefer? Number two. Again, this will only increase male depression. We've already raised a generation of losers. Thanks to Me Too style indoctrination, nearly 25% of US millennial men think asking to buy a woman a drink is a form of sexual harassment. As philosopher Slavo Žižek writes, if in the old days of heterosexual normativity, homosexuality was treated as illness, it is now masculinity itself, which is medicalized and turned into a sickness to be fought. David French strikes a similar tone writing in his column, the assault on traditional masculinity, while liberating to men who don't fit traditional norms 
is itself harmful to the millions of young men who seek to be physically and mentally tough, to rise to challenges and demonstrate leadership under pressure. The assault on traditional masculinity is an assault on their very natures. Are boys disproportionately adventurous? Are they risk takers? Do they feel a need to be strong? Do they often by default reject stereotypically feminine characteristics? Yes, 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 and yes. Toxic masculinity. 43% of boys are raised by single mothers. 78% of teachers are female. So close to 50% of boys have 100% feminine influence at home and 80% feminine influence at school. Toxic masculinity isn't the problem. The lack of masculinity is. But the corporate assault on masculinity is nothing new. For years, men in TV commercials have been portrayed as emasculated, bumbling, clueless idiots. It's just a burst pipe. I can fix it. <laughs> also, isn't it so refreshing to be righteously hectored by Gillette, a company that's owned by Procter & Gamble, notorious for animal rights testing and child labour, like they've got any kind of moral high ground. According to the BBC, the Gillette commercial split opinion. 82,000 upvotes versus 343,000 downvotes. Split opinion, really? And for people who think that Gillette is going to apologise for any of this, no. Not going to happen. You have to remember that most people are quite stupid and don't read the news. All that registers in their brain is the word Gillette, which then in turn triggers a purchase impulse. Gillette is merely exploiting a tried and tested method of marketing. Free advertising via virtue signal. By turning their brand into a viral news item, they just secured the equivalent exposure that would normally cost tens of millions of dollars. The YouTube video alone got over 4 million views in just two days. When Nike made Colin Kaepernick the face of their Just Do It campaign, they prompted outrage on the right. But their stock ended up soaring, and they made six billion dollars. Again, free advertising via virtue signal. Greed disguised as progressivism. Any boycott is far outweighed by the hordes of mindless consumers whose brains are hardwired to react to the visibility of the product alone. You're more likely to get Gillette to apologize for its non-binary phobic, the best a man can get slogan. But just for men and L'Oreal men expert also have a lot to answer for. Please click the big red button to subscribe. It really helps me when you do that. And click the bell to allow notifications so you never miss a new video.